What's up guys? It's been quite a long while since I've been able to take some time and post anything to YouTube. Toward the middle of last year things got really kind of crazy. My mom was in the hospital for a few months. I was getting married, school work, playing gigs. It meant I had no time to do turn on the camera and just talk to myself basically is what I'm doing here. But you're watching it so it's cool. I wanted to do a video today kind of just talk about a passion of mine. Guitars. I've been playing classical guitar um, since I was about 15 years old. I play mariachi music. If you guys know me, I've been playing mariachi guitar for a very long time. It really wasn't until I graduated from college, had some resources and some time to really study the instrument itself, um, how it's made, all the different types of makers of classical guitars. The classical guitar, as we kind of know it today, really started in the late 1800s by an instrument maker named Antonio de Torres. He derived what we know of the standard Spanish classical guitar. So when you're choosing a classical guitar, whether you play classical music or if you play mariachi music, first is going to be playability. If it doesn't suit you, and your hand and how you play it doesn't do you any good if you can't play. Second thing, what's the sound? You know, how does it sound? How does it vibrate? <laughs> You know, these things are meant to fill concert halls. The first thing that I look at when I buy any guitar, this angle, you see this here. Here, you have a breaking angle where the string goes into the hole to the point where it touches the saddle part. You wanna have an angle and that's creating downward movement on the top of the guitar. The guitar is basically a drum, the top of it. So if you don't have anything that's pushing down when you pluck a string, you're not going to get a whole lot of value in terms of tonal quality. The next main giveaway visually, if you're looking at a photograph or something like that, is to make sure that the neck is straight. Now a classical guitar, if it doesn't have a metal truss rod, and even some that do, um, over time this neck will start to creep towards the bridge. And it's because the strings, they have tension. So over time you'll see the neck start to creep, a little bit of neck creep. Battery level low. Fuck. Sorry about that guys, the camera battery died. So I have this new guitar here. Um, I just purchased this guitar about a month ago. It's a few months old. And I'm gonna kind of use this to kind of show what I mean when I talk about things that should be correct. So we were talking about the neck angle. It's important for two things. Number one, playability. If this action is too high because the neck going like this, you're going to have a hard time playing, okay? It's just going to happen. And it happens on old guitars, so if you're buying a vintage guitar, that's one of the first things that I look for. It'll also affect tonation. Produces an A. When you play on the 12th fret, it should also produce the same A. Now it's an octave higher, but it shouldn't be any sharper or flatter than the original A. So to kind of show you guys what I mean here when I say it needs to be perfect. Right, right on the money. So that's an E. I go to the 12th fret, here, 12th fret. It's right there. So yeah, as you can see, it tunes. You can see here that it has a nice breaking angle, right? Right here, what we were talking about earlier. Next thing that you wanna look for when you're testing a guitar, this here. This headstock is supposed, it should never be straight. Okay, I've seen guitars where the headstock is damn near straight. The reason why it needs to be bent like this, and you can see this one has a nice bend to it. You hear people talk about tension, okay? High tension, low tension. The tension of the guitar is determined by how the guitar is braced and how this is. See, this is perfect. What this is doing is when you string your strings here, down to the bridge here, is creating that, that tension, okay, that you need. Another test that I use um, when talking about the headstock, you know, and this looks very pretty. This is really nice. The strings here, these strings should not touch the wood. That's, that's something that people don't know. If we get in close, you see here, you can take a, just a card, a piece, of, a piece of paper, and it should freely, yep, see, it's not touching. See, all the way to the string, it's not touching. This is perfect, okay? So it has great tension, it's pulling the string, the strings are not touching the wood. Now, why is that important? The strings up here, you want them to be free and you want them to be strong, straight, as straight as possible. It needs to go straight to keep that tension and to keep that string free 
so that it can it can play. Okay? It doesn't do me any good if I'm That's how a lot of guitars sound. When you have a guitar and you play a bar chord like an F and it's very difficult when you're like and you're you're pushing as hard as you can and you're still getting this the reason why that shit happens is because the person or the manufacturer or the company that built the guitar didn't pay attention to what they were doing here. Or they it's a flaw, okay? It's a minor flaw. It doesn't kill your instrument, but when you're paying a lot of money, you want it to be correct, okay? So that is a major flaw. This guitar doesn't have that flaw. And that's really good because when you're playing fast, when you're a classical player, or if you're playing mariachi like I do and you're... Your hand is playing, you know, you're playing very fast. It gives you more playability when that's correct, when the scale is correct, it plays in tune, and it has good tension. Now let's talk about finish for a second. When you have guitars that are lacquered on the top, or polyurethane lacquer, or some sort of very heavy varnish that's really shiny, when you have that sort of thing, the top can't move you basically freeze the top. And so the guitar is as good as it will ever sound. That's all you're gonna get. So if you spend $10,000 on a guitar and it's been lacquered for some reason, the, the guitar maker chose not to French polish it or not to varnish it, that guitar is pretty much as good as it's gonna be. It could be the best guitar in the world as it was. And so that's fine, more than likely not. The French polish here, um, these guitars, I've only had this guitar for a month and I can already tell differences and just very subtle little differences in how the guitar sounds. You hear that bass and you hear that treble. It's a world of difference, the finish, it's a big deal. And so how are you gonna know that? Well, most vintage guitars, classical guitars from the 60s and the 70s, and if you're lucky enough to find one that was in the 30s or 40s or 20s, um, those are all mostly varnish, like a violin, or French polish, um, like this one. If you can find one that old and affordable, most of those guitars sell for thousands of dollars. Okay, we're talking anywhere between seven thousand, ten thousand, all the way up to ninety grand to a hundred hundred thousand dollars. Okay, they get very expensive. And just you know, I didn't pay anywhere near that for this. This is this is only a few thousand. This guitar. The sound that it produces, for me, it's all correct. Now, if you're talking about handmade, you are talking about a luthier, a person who is trained and is skilled in making stringed instruments. Everything is handmade, okay? It's custom. It's it's a unique instrument and nothing else that sounds like it. Handmade by a luthier and hand finished by a luthier, you're gonna go, you could spend maybe a couple hundred dollars on an old guitar that was French polished in 1972 and it's a beater, and it's maybe not worth a lot of money, but you'd be damned you're gonna get that. You're gonna get a wonderful sound out of it, okay? That's that's usually what I look for. When you have guitars that are handmade by some companies out there, and they're producing hundreds of them a month, those are more hand-assembled. Now, the individual pieces, like the neck, the fretboard, the bridge, they are more than likely made by machines, cut to a template, and then a trained guitar maker or luthier or a craftsman will then assemble the guitar, glue it all down and bind it and finish it. Most of those guitars don't even get, you know, fit. Those are polyurethane spray spray finished. And they're hard. They're cheap. They're affordable for students. But if you're looking for something to invest, I, you know, you want to stay clear of that kind of stuff. This guitar that I showed you earlier is a grand concert, okay? I was lucky enough to buy it used. It was only a couple thousand dollars. This guitar for me is, is amazing. Just the sound. It has a sweet, very sweet, you know, sound to it. You know, it's perfect for classical and perfect for me for playing mariachi music into a, a nice microphone. This is Brazilian rosewood. So this is kind of like the holy grail, all right? If you can find a Brazilian rosewood guitar and it has all of these characteristics, has a straight neck, it has a good angle on the bridge, it's well put together, it's not lacquered, it was French polished, 
And you see, this is the only flaw. That's not much of an angle. It's like maybe one or two degrees more and it would have been perfect like this. And because of that, as great as this guitar is, brand new, this would probably run you, you know, $15,000, okay, or more. Um, it fails a couple tests. I take this piece of paper and it's, it's not going through. It's touching, it's touching the wood. That one is fine. Ah, that one touches. No, 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 no. You look at this one. It's touching. And it's touching. That means that this guitar is flawed. It's beautiful and I love this guitar. It's my favorite instrument that I've ever bought. And it's, it's, it's great sound. But it could be better if it didn't have that flaw. If I bought this brand new and paid $20,000 for a Brazilian Rosewood concert and it had that flaw, I'd be pissed. If you're a guitar player and you weren't going to make your living off of it, it needs to be perfect. This was a great opportunity. It's, you know, everything that a Spanish classical guitar should be. It just has one flaw, one little thing. It's nitpicky, I know, but it's there, okay? No bias. It's just a fact. That is there, okay? Everything else is great. Uh, cracks. You remember what I said earlier that the top of the guitar is like a drum. Cracks in the surface of the guitar will dampen that sound. So normally you'll see cracks right down the middle where the wood is joined, right right down here or right up here. They're easy to repair. If you're worried about buying a guitar with cracks, say you have an opportunity to buy a vintage Miguel Rodriguez guitar. Those guitars cost $40,000, right? If you want, are gonna spend that kind of money and the person you're buying it from says it's mint condition, that's why they want 40,000, here's a good tip. Take a UV light Turn the lights out in the room and shine the UV light on the top of the guitar. You will see every single crack, nick and cranny and refinish uh, that happened to that guitar. And then you have a point to say, hey, what's all this shit? Hey, you want 40 grand? Mm -mm, I think I want 10 grand now, right? Make sure that the guitar is well put together, that the neck is straight, that you have a good angle. The one thing that you can tell is if this is not right, then the neck is not right then the tuning is not right, and the tension is not right. One, they all kind of interconnect. It's like a friggin' math equation. Refinish, that's another thing. We were talking about uh, finishes just now. When you refinish a guitar, you destroy the value of the guitar, okay? It's not about how pretty the guitar looks. This guitar looks amazing. It's, it's, it's very beautiful. I want it to stay like this forever, but just because you have some scratches or some marks or some plate wear, don't refinish the guitar. Don't do it. If you go to a luthier and they're more than happy to refinish a classical guitar, you should run, okay? The, um, it's like refinishing a piano. A grand piano, a Steinway, can cost hundreds of thousands of dollars. A Stradivarius violin that's in an original condition can cost millions of dollars. A classical guitar, if you refinish it for no reason other than you want it to look pretty, you are throwing your money away and you're devaluing your instrument. So don't ever do that. If the wood is exposed, that's the only exception. That is when, when you take it to a luthier and you say, hey, there's a bunch of wood that's exposed, I'm worried. What the luthier should do is they should be able to match if it's a French polish, if it's a, a water-based lacquer, if it's a varnish, an oil. They should be able to tell and they should match that finish to cover only that part of the instrument so that it's protected and sealed, right? And it's good to go. The rest of it should remain fine. And that's when those UV lamps come in handy because if you look at a UV lamp, it'll look like one color and then it'll be a, a bright spot or a dark spot here. And you're like, aha, so someone refinished the guitar. These are just things that I have picked up when I've been purchasing guitars and selling guitars to people. These are things that I look for without any kind of bias or, or endorsement really of one brand or the other. I've played a lot of really nice high-end classical guitars and flamenco guitars that cost 60000 or 10000 I think a good standard concert classical guitar or flamenco guitar, you know, will run you anywhere between 4000 and 10000 depending on the maker and depending on the types of woods that they use. I mean, this, this guitar here is made out of cedar. Now, I took this to a friend of mine who plays classical guitar and he was kind of blown away. He's like, I've never seen a guitar made out of cedar before. This is insane. So I think that about does it for this video, guys. Thank you for watching. Just a couple of tips and tricks that'll help you if you're out there looking to buy a guitar. If you maybe have a thousand 
or maybe you have 700 saved up and you want to go buy a good quality instrument for whatever amount of money you spent. Even $700, guys, to buy something that's relatively cheap, that's still a lot of gigs to play. Just remember, when you're looking at guitars, you want to make sure that you find guitars that have these characteristics. When you kind of follow those rules, you put yourself in a really good position when you buy an instrument to say, I will use that guitar until the day my hands stop working. Thanks again guys for watching. I hope you really enjoyed this kind of uh, brief tip and trick on how to buy a classical guitar if you're, if you're out there. Um, and let me know what you guys think. What have you guys come across? What are some of the things that you've run across when buying instruments? Do you guys have any questions or if you're looking at a old, you know, classical guitar and you're, you just want to kind of do some homework or you want to just chat about, I can talk about guitars all day long. If you have questions or anything like that, hit me up, leave me a comment. I'm going to try to make more videos throughout the year and going forward. This is a really nice way for me to, you know, de-stress and you know, kind of have an outlet in this crazy world that we're living in. Thanks a lot for watching you guys, um, and uh, let me know what you guys think, and you guys have a good one. Alright, thanks.